Yep, Ole Miss won their bye week, and now they're a legit playoff hosting contender. We'll explain. You are locked on Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Stephen Willis, a 10-year veteran member of the national media and a former Ole Miss staff member. Today we're talking about how Ole Miss won their bye week. The Rebels were one Arkansas Razorbacks misstep away from a perfect sweep of the weekend, but the Georgia Bulldogs delivered exactly what Ole Miss needed as well by taking care of their Tennessee Volunteers opponents, potentially solidifying that Ole Miss win as the best win in college football this season. Don't sleep on the South Carolina Gamecocks. They're the hottest team in college football. They pulled off a miracle comeback up against Missouri as well, making it an incredible weekend for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss, and once again proving dial of destiny is a thing. So stay locked in for all the latest on Ole Miss football right here on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day. And a special hello to the insiders and everydayers who make the show what it is. Don't forget to find a second listen on the network. Chris Gordy at Locked On SEC or Corey Burton at Locked On Vandy offer great perspectives about the SEC and college football, heck, even Ole Miss. So check them out. You can start the season off with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win that first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So my take is, in this situation, Ole Miss won their bye week. They had a nearly perfect bye week, and they have firmly firmly entered the playoff picture, and they are definitely contenders for hosting at the moment. What we learned overall is, Because of that perfect bye week, they are in the hosting discussion as we speak right now. And Ole Miss needed Georgia to be the Georgia Bulldogs versus Tennessee, and they were just that. They were very impressive, and that win is a bright, shining star on the hill. And third, Florida helped Ole Miss the most this weekend, believe it or not, by beating the LSU Tigers on Saturday. We will explain about that. But you look at what happened this past weekend. And all of the stuff that Ole Miss needed to happen. You looked at the list, you're like, okay, well, if Ole Miss wants to go to Atlanta, they probably need Texas to drop a game against Arkansas. And um, a little bit later on in the day, Ole Miss needed South Carolina and Georgia to take care of business. And it would be really nice if Kansas would do Ole Miss a solid in the late night game as well. And lo and behold, every bit of that happened and happened in the perfect possible way. Now, I do think Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a real thing at this point because the way that South Carolina-Missouri game ended last night, I'm genuinely thinking that if I don't watch Dial of Destiny on Friday, that Saturday afternoon game doesn't happen the way it does. So I'm as superstitious as everybody. So whenever I talk playoffs and somebody comes into me and is like, no, we're paying attention on to Florida this weekend – don't think that I'm not superstitious, okay? Don't don't think that at all. But I am going to talk playoff. I'm going to talk these things that need to be discussed because they're important. And also, when you don't do it, it makes the playoffs and those playoff games and all that, when you get in there, they become almost a bridge too far because of the nervous energy that is within the fan base. I am a firm believer in speaking about your problems, speaking about your wishes and getting it out there and being completely open about it and not letting them build up into something crazy. So I'm going to talk playoffs. I'm going to talk hosting. I'm going to talk all of that stuff, but everybody needs to realize that I can walk and chew gum at the same time. And I realize that Ole Miss needs to really buckle up against the Florida Gators because Florida did Ole Miss a big favor beating LSU over the weekend. We'll talk about that in the second segment. Let's start off the day, you know, that Texas-Arkansas game, and Taylor Green was not good. Arkansas was dropping balls. They were very sloppy. They had to play a clean game to beat Texas. They did not do that. They ended up losing 20-10 to to Texas. Texas could not throw the ball on that Arkansas secondary in that game. They couldn't. This was the same secondary that Jackson Dart basically broke every record Ole Miss had just two weeks earlier. Ole Miss scored 63 points in that game. Texas had a genuine genuine problem scoring the football. Texas, I am convinced they're not good at the moment. 
they're not. They're going to win. If they go 11-1, and one, they're going to win the SEC and all of that stuff and get the seed and have all the perks that come with it. But if Texas loses to Texas A&M, I think it's a real possibility that they do not make the playoffs. I am at the point to where Texas and Texas A&M control their own playoff destinies by that game against each other. If Texas beats Texas A&M, Texas is going to the SEC championship game and then to the playoffs. If Texas A&M beats Texas, Texas A&M is likely going to the SEC championship and then to the playoffs, but not both of them. They're not both getting in. And if Texas A&M um, is the team that makes it into the playoffs, they're the fourth SEC school that would make it into the competition. They're getting in by the hair of their chinny chin chin. Texas, if they beat Texas A&M, they're coming in as the one seed. And just whenever you're looking at teams coming in, obviously, if you win the SEC championship game, you have a chance to get the bye. An actual playoff season seeding would look a little bit different. But I'm talking about teams that are guaranteed in the playoffs, in my opinion. And right now, the best teams in the SEC are Arkansas and Alabama. Not particularly close at the moment. Georgia comes in right behind them, and then you have that Texas and Texas a and line. I think those are the four teams that have a chance to get into the 12-team playoffs. And make no mistakes, Kansas did you a huge favor over the weekend by knocking BYU out of that perfect season discussion to where if they dropped a game in the championship game, would the Big 12 get two? That's not going to happen now. Big 12 just became a one-bid league. Um, with Colorado or Arizona State potentially taking that spot. The ACC is likely a one-bid league as well with Clemson or whoever wins that. Clemson or SMU gets in. The other one is going out. Um, or Miami as well. Whoever does that is going to be one bid. And you have Notre Dame. And Notre Dame plays Army this weekend, which has a chance to get weird, but nobody's expecting Army to win that football game. I'm expecting Notre Dame to win that football game. So Notre Dame is likely in, and they're likely hosting. Ohio State is likely in, and they're likely hosting. Um, Penn State is likely in, and they're likely hosting. That leaves one hosting spot for an SEC school. And Ole Miss is firmly in the discussion for that. But right now, that hosting spot is probably between Alabama and Ole Miss. If Alabama makes it to Atlanta and wins the SEC championship, they obviously would get a bye and Ole Miss would slide into that position. Whoever lost the SEC championship game would probably end up traveling to the first um, location. So you have the SEC champion and Ole Miss likely in a position to host if they win out. If Ole Miss wins this game, just keeps going the way that they need to go, they're going to be in a good position to host, is what I'm saying. And then you have the Georgia Bulldogs. You have the Tennessee Volunteers. The South Carolina Gamecocks, by the way, is starting to show off on the next four out things that people are putting. That, that win right there is turning into an absolute fantastic resume win for Ole Miss. That win and the Georgia win is helping Ole Miss so much right now. And Lenore Sellers, Honestly, at South Carolina, looks like a completely different quarterback than the guy that played against Ole Miss just a couple of weeks ago. Really fantastic stuff. That Kansas-BYU game after the Tennessee-Georgia game, and which, by the way, Tennessee um, jumped up on them 10 to nothing. Georgia had a hangover in that game. Ole Miss was well on their way to beating Georgia twice in that football game. Georgia snapped out of it in the last three quarters. They outscored the Tennessee Volunteers 31-7. to and so the result is close. The actual reaction that was happening on the field, it was a beatdown. It was basically the reverse for Georgia of what happened the week before in Oxford, Mississippi, to where it just started steamrolling and rolling downhill. And it was fantastic. But all of these results happened in a way that helped out Ole Miss out massively. And it probably, the crazy thing is, those directly helped Ole Miss in the playoff, but it probably wasn't the biggest result of the day. And that's interesting to me. The Florida Gators pulled off the low-key best win of the weekend for Ole Miss, beating the LSU Tigers and keeping their momentum alive. You know, with Florida looking sharp, Ole Miss fans 
need to focus on two major storylines right now. A crucial matchup, matchup this week with the Florida Gators and staying in the playoff discussion. Can the Rebels keep their focus and stay relevant? Stay tuned for that. Hey, football fans, listen up. Our friends over at 5-Hour Energy know that being passionate fans, it's not just a pastime. It's a way of life. It takes serious energy to pass power through those all-day tailgate gates, intense touchdown celebrations, and let's be honest, the stress of those double overtime games. That is why we have created the Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot featuring a flavor made just for fans like us. It's called Fan Fuel. Whether you're first in the parking lot or the last to leave, we see you. And this energy shot is made for you. You know, what gave me fan fuel this week, thinking about the Rebels went over the Georgia Bulldogs and how the playoff picture will play out. The touchdown in the third quarter to Juice Wells or Ulysses Bentley taking it up the middle. It was all electrifying. And with a huge matchup coming up this weekend against the Florida Gators, I'm already gearing up. Whether it's tailgating with friends or rocking my brand new Ole Miss jersey, fan fuel is the boost I need to match my team's energy. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you're rooting for, being a fan takes heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. From prepping for a tailgate to ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is a mile long. That's why Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot is here to keep you fueled all season long. What's the your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, tackle it with 5-Hour Energy. Available at 5hourenergy.com and shipped nationwide. You know, a partner on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast is College Corner. It's your one-stop shop for all things Ole Miss. You know, game day is just around the corner, and this week we are rocking red against the Florida Gators. So head on over to the College Corner to pick up that perfect game day gear. Whether you're gearing up for football, basketball, or baseball, College Corner has you covered. They're located off of Sisk Avenue, right across from the new Chick-fil-A, and getting to the store is a breeze with plenty of parking. Hey, the new Realtree Galaxy Line stuff, they have a ton of those things, including pullovers and stuff like that. It is awesome. Go check that out as well whenever you visit their locations in Oxford, Flowood, or Ridgeland. And for those of you out of state, no worries. Visit collegecornerstore.com where they turn around orders lightning fast. Trust me, this just isn't a pitch. College Corner is where I get all of my Rebel gear. So visit collegecornerstore.com or stop by College Corner today. So Florida had low-key the best weekend victory for Ole Miss. They did Ole Miss a huge favor. This Florida favor is, the Gators did Ole Miss a huge favor for the Rebels um, by beating the LSU Tigers. Um, they had a really good game. Now, it wasn't a dominant performance. It wasn't a statement performance, but it was a win by the Florida Gators. And in a lot of situations, it was an example of an LSU team that had all been eliminated from the playoffs playing a game against the Florida Gators a week later. A big emotional contest and a letdown that happened. If you want a prime example of that, for the entire season, LSU's offensive line gave up six sacks, including playing against Alabama and Ole Miss. LSU has been protecting the passer at an alarmingly good rate this whole season. They gave up seven sacks in the game against the Florida Gators. So they obviously weren't at the level that we think they are. Now, Ron Roberts, the defensive coordinator at Florida, we'll talk about him as the week goes on. He has played Ole Miss twice with the Baylor Bears in the Sugar Bowl and against the Auburn Tigers a year ago. Um, he's had moderate amount of success against um, Lane Kiffin and this Ole Miss offense. So it's something to keep an eye on at least. But as it sits now, there's no excuse for doubling up the number of sacks for the LSU Tigers unless there was a one-two problem. There was an effort problem. You know, everybody likes to make fun. Like, I'm in the group chat with all of the other SEC locked on hosts, and I made the comment that you can say what you want to about Billy Napier. His kids play hard for him. And you could see on the football field, they were playing really hard. And everybody in there started making fun of me because we're talking about them playing hard. Like that is a irrelevant thing. Playing hard is usually the first step to getting wins. Whenever you're on a losing team playing hard, you have a chance to turn it around. 
you have a chance to be real. If you're on a um, losing team and you're not playing hard, you're getting rolled at the end of the season like we I think we're about to see LSU get. But Billy Napier has his boys playing hard, and he has good players in DJ Lagway. Um, Elijah Badger came back this week. Montrell Johnson came back. This will be the healthiest that Florida has been the entire season. Um, so, well, since the early part of the season, minus their quarterback. Now, Ford is still not good. They're just dangerous. Is that the word? Is that the right word I'm looking for? They're a team that if they're up for it, they're playing really hard. You can't let them front run. It's going to be important for Ole Miss to matriculate the ball down the field and score points and get ahead of the Florida Gators. Ford is a team that if you're even, you're leaving. Ford is a team that if they're up, it's going to be really hard, as the LSU Tigers found out. So we will see if Ole Miss is able to do that. But that win lets every Ole Miss player know that they need to take this weekend really seriously. The worst thing that could have happened to Ole Miss was LSU winning 42-14. to That would have been the worst thing. A win against a team that beat Ole Miss gets everybody's attention. Whenever you get six, seven sacks defensively, you think the Ole Miss offensive line is going to pay attention to that defensive line for the Florida Gators? And there are good players on this Florida team. I think there are 15 or 16 senior bowl watch list players on the Florida Gators team. So they're talented. They could jump up and get you. They've recruited fairly well. It's not any of the players' fault that there has been a crazy dumpster fire swirling around the program this year. It's not the player's fault, not Billy Napier's fault. This is all external stuff coming in. And we're going to talk to Brandon Olson on Thursday and get his thoughts of what was going on. But that's all real stuff. But Florida plays really hard. Those kids play really hard for Billy Napier and Ron Roberts and, and the other Austin Armstrong, those guys. And they need to be commended for that. And because they play really hard, if we're just going to be real about it, in a game, in a season where they're starting a true freshman, talented quarterback, um, they have a chance to beat Florida State, their hated rivalry, who is last in the S in the NCAA in touchdown scores with 14 this season. They have a chance to really turn around things against the Seminoles and get to a bowl game. You know, we always make fun about is Birmingham the goal, is the Texas Bowl the goal, is the Liberty Bowl the goal. Well, this year, with a freshman quarterback and all of those young players on the field, yes, it is an extremely big momentum time for Billy Napier and the Florida Gators. Huge win. Absolutely massive get win for the Florida Gators over the course of the weekend, but mainly for the Ole Miss Rebels because it takes Knox LSU off the board. It is going to make the Ole Miss players really dig in and respect and get fired up for this football game, a road game in the Southeastern Conference, going to be really big for them to potentially get a win, and a win and they absolutely have to have, if we're going to be honest about it. But we will see how it goes. Should be quite awesome. Should be quite fun. I'm a huge fan of this. But remember this also. There's a couple of things before we get into the lines um, coming up. First of all, Ole Miss is two true freshman quarterbacks away from the playoffs and potentially hosting. That's a real thing. Nobody says that. And if you hear people say, I don't want to hear about that, I'm only thinking about whatever, and it, it's virtue signaling. It's kind of putting out the thing that all I care about is this, so we're focused on what's going on and we're not looking over the opponent. I get all of that. I understand what's happening, but it's it's crazy because at the end of the day, nobody online controls the output, now the outcome of the ball game. And also, the players see the film. They're going to be as locked in as they can be. And Florida winning that game did you a huge favor. So we need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time over the next 11, 12 days. The the most consequential 11 or 12 days in the history of Ole Miss football is over the next 12 days. Ole Miss handles business against Florida and against Mississippi State. Again, two true freshman quarterbacks, 10-point favorite against the Florida Gators, 
probably somewhere in the mid-20s against Mississippi State. If Ole Miss handles business, this is going to be absolutely massive for the Rebels. Indeed. I'm pretty fired up about that. All right, coming up in our final segment of the day, we dive into the Week 13 SEC lines and the results that could give Ole Miss a boost with just 11 days left in the regular season. Every game matters. Don't miss it. You know, get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book because right now new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if they win. The FanDuel Sportsbook gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. Like I said, Ole Miss is favored by nine and a half points over the Florida Gators this weekend. I think the over-under is somewhere around 56 and a half points, 57 and a half points, somewhere in there. Um, should be an interesting bet and an interesting way to look at the football games coming on. I've always talked about how this season reminds me of the 2008 season with the way they're playing at the end of the year. So we'll see exactly how that works out. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if that first $5 bet wins. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Also, game time is the place to get your Ole Miss tickets with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from receipts, and the lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying Ole Miss tickets. You know, Vaught Hemingway doesn't have a bad seat. The Egg Bowl is already sold out. You're going to have to hit the secondary market if you want in for the potential coronation that is set up for that Mississippi State game. If the Florida game goes the way that it's projected to go, that Mississippi State game has a chance to be a little bit of a coronation. They have the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Take the guesswork out of buying Ole Miss tickets with game time. And with this being the most anticipated season in Ole Miss history, I may be able to help you out with tickets as well. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So the week thirteen lines, and we're going to get to that in just a second. Um, have a chance to be. I don't know, interesting is the right word. It, it should be good, and there's a lot of games going on. Like the Indiana-Ohio State game is very consequential for the Ole Miss Rebels. And, of course, root for chaos. Outside of Ole Miss, root for chaos. That is going to be good for Ole Miss. And it could have Ole Miss, after this weekend, sitting firmly in the hosting discussion as well. The betting line for the Ole Miss-Florida game is Ole Miss is currently favored by Nine and a half points. The over-under is sitting at 56 and a half points as well. Interesting bet. The line is fairly low. The Florida's, Florida defense is playing pretty good right now. Ron Roberts is doing pretty well. Whenever he was at Auburn, he slowed Ole Miss down a little bit in that Auburn game. They played a very good game. And against Baylor, they kind of had Lane's number as well. So we'll see what happens with Lane Kiffin going against Ron Roberts this weekend. If you look at the betting line, there's that Ole Miss minus nine and a half. Georgia's favored by 44 and a half points against UMass. It's really one of the reasons this weekend was so big for Ole Miss is because the two teams that Ole Miss needed to win, it was their last opportunity to really lose until the last week of the season. Georgia was one of those teams. Georgia had UMass. They're favored by nearly 45 points in this game, and they have Georgia Tech. That Georgia Tech game should be interesting, but if Georgia or South Carolina loses the game against whoever they're playing, they're not falling out of the top 25. So Ole Miss is going to have that quality win regardless. That is another reason this weekend was so huge. UTEP is at Tennessee. Tennessee's favored by 40 and a half points. Another really big line, um, Scotty Waldron, I believe. He was the coach at Austin P up near Clarksville, Tennessee. Um, so this game probably has some sort of a meaning maybe for him. UTEP just doesn't have a lot of dudes, and this is a hard situation to deal with when you don't have dudes. Texas A&M is only favored by two and a half points against Auburn. 
This is another one of those trap lines, I think. Two weeks ago, you had the Georgia line that no matter – everybody was betting on Georgia, the line wasn't moving. It stayed and actually went down. Last week, it would, they did the same thing with Kansas and BYU, where BYU was favored by a point and a half, two points, and it did not move the whole week. And everybody's like, what's going on? Kansas is three and six. Kansas wins the game outright. This is the game this week that has a chance to do that. And the reason that it has to do that has nothing to do with the real talent on the field. It will be a night game at Jordan-Hare Stadium. It will be an absolutely crazy atmosphere. But Texas A&M has Texas the next week. And what will be potentially a playoff play-in game, loser leave town match in the first game in Kyle Field, and going into Jordan Hare when Auburn's playing pretty well, because I'm gonna be honest, against ULM might have been the best that Auburn has played all season. So if Ole Miss can get or Auburn can get past Texas AM, which they might be able to do, because it's like I told Zach Blackerby when I talked to him yesterday. If Auburn can't do the same thing that South Carolina did, something's wrong. Jarquez Hunter and Rocket Sanders, there's a lot of similarities in those backs. And Auburn doing that and trying to recreate what South Carolina did, it could be very interesting indeed. Vanderbilt is at LSU. LSU's favored by seven and a half points. LSU's also on quit warning the remainder of the season, um, giving up seven sacks in a single game after six the whole year. You can't tell me that that is um, anything less than effort. I think LSU's definitely on quit warning against Vanderbilt, which means don't be surprised if Vanderbilt wins this game. Vanderbilt has been very good as underdogs this season, but we'll see exactly how it goes. They're, they're, LSU has to have a bunch of want to, and right now LSU is trying to think of how many opt-outs they're likely going to have for the Texas Bowl at the moment. Speaking of the Texas Bowl, Louisiana Tech is at Arkansas. Arkansas is favored by 22.5 points. Not really that big of a deal. I mean, I expect Arkansas to win this game fairly comfortably. Um, their Super Bowl, though, was last week, and it, this is another team that is going to be on quit watch the rest of the season. This is the game. If Arkansas wants to get to six, this is the game where it has to happen because that Missouri game has a chance to be weird. Missouri's only favored by six and a half points at Mississippi State. Now, Missouri's playoff hopes, what dim hopes that they had, was dashed by a last-second loss to South Carolina last weekend. This is another team that whenever the playoff gets out of the questions, what are you going to do? How relevant can you be? Is it the situation that this game is a lot closer than it needed to be because of what is going on? We'll see how that goes as well. Kentucky's at Texas. Texas favor with 20 and a half points. If anybody has any last-minute hopes of Ole Miss getting to Atlanta, Ole Miss has to have Kentucky win this game. And Wofford's at South Carolina. It's a no-line no game. We talked about the Georgia game earlier. Um, I have I don't foresee South Carolina struggling at all. And Alabama is at Oklahoma. They're only favored by 13 and a half points. We'll see exactly how it goes for the Oklahoma Sooners and Alabama Crimson Tide. This game, that game doesn't necessarily affect Ole Miss. What it sits right now, I think in the SEC, you need to root for Auburn to win out. That helps you out regardless if you're an Ole Miss fan. Um, I think that you need to have Vanderbilt beat Tennessee. Go ahead and kind of get them out of the way as well. And if that happens, you're just sitting pretty. Um, and with Auburn beating Texas A&M, Vandy beating Tennessee, and Auburn potentially beating Alabama, you could be sitting really, really pretty. So we'll see exactly how that goes. This week, we are good, but we're going to get into keys to beating the Florida Gators. Tomorrow we'll be back in our normal game week swing. I appreciate everybody being patient with me. It was really hard. So thank you for making the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast your go-to source for Ole Miss sports. We pride ourselves on offering the most comprehensive perspectives, which is why we're the number one Ole Miss podcast. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for making Lockdown Ole Miss your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Lockdown SEC Podcast. Host Chris Gordy holds no punches covering the best conference in college football. Find Locked On SEC on YouTube or wherever you listen to those podcasts. And also exciting news, you can now become a Locked On Ole Miss insider. It is the best and easiest way to stay updated on all things Ole Miss sports. It's our texting program. 
that sends you notifications on anything relevant without the hassle of message boards filled with trolls. Enjoy a 14-day free trial and experience the future of college sports coverage. We're adding new perks as we grow, so do not forget to do not miss out. The link is down in the description. For those of you watching on YouTube, we're going to send you to Lockdown College Sports right now. Howdy toddy, everyone.